Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games and the first video in our How to Play Population Z series. I'm Lee and I'll be taking you through everything you need to know to play Population Z, the zombie survival tabletop skirmish game. In this video, you'll find out how to assemble a group of survivors and then how to design your survivors using all of the tables and the instructions from Population Z, Welcome to Huntsville core book. Okay, let's get started. And the first thing you're going to need to build your group is a copy of the group sheet. You can print this off, there's free copies online. You can download it as a PDF and it's also found in the back of the book if you'd prefer to photocopy it. This is where you're gonna record all of your survivors throughout the campaign. First, give your group a name. Our group are on the hunt for donuts, so we're gonna go with Go Nuts for Donuts. And then fill out the player name. Population Z is a solo co-op game. You can also play it player versus player, but we're going co-op, so it's gonna be me and my son, Nicholas, so Lee and Nicholas. Then we've got to choose our camp perk, and our camp perk is gonna give us a benefit, and the benefit depends on the type of camp. So we're gonna choose our favorite, which is Nana's house, and then we're gonna write down the camp perk associated with it. In the case of Nana's house, she's always gonna keep her cupboard stocked. So you can give any one survivor one can of beans once per skirmish. Now we're gonna move on and start building our survivors. You can find the survivor cards and the backpack available to download for free in color or black and white. And you can also photocopy it from the book or purchase the asset book. Let's start with the survivor card. So you put the name of your survivor at the top and then you can draw a picture if you want to. Then you'll choose the size. That will influence how many items you can carry. Then you're gonna choose a job, a hobby, and a skill. And then you'll be filling out the other characteristics. Here's the action characteristic. That tells you how many actions per activation your survivor can carry out. Then the reflex characteristic, the guard characteristic, and then the armor characteristic. As we move to the other side of the card, you can see you've got 10 ammo. You'll always start with 10 ammo here, unless you play hardcore mode. Then you've got five apples and five hearts. These are used for healing and making reactions. There are some other characteristics that we don't put on the card. Everyone can walk two inches, and then you've got luck and noise, and these are the same for any survivor when they first start out. You can change them with abilities later on. Let's have a look at the backpack card now. So here, any items you find during your searches, you'll write here, a little area for notes at the bottom, and each item will have a number that you place in the carry slot there to tell you how heavy the item is. Now we need to choose a model to represent our character. In this example, I'm gonna use this character, Bubblegum, that we've developed, and you can also use the standees that are provided in the asset book and also free to download on our website. Once we've got a character's name, we'll enter that on the group sheet, and then we'll set that to the side until we begin the campaign, and I'll cover that in a future video. In that video, we'll look at goals, injuries, and much more to do with the campaign. That's all we need to do for the group sheet for now, so we'll put that to one side, and now we'll focus on the survivor card and the backpack, and we'll move on to carry out the other steps. And let's start filling this in, beginning with the size. So we've got small, medium, and large to choose from. A small survivor can move further, climb higher, and generally get around the battlefield more efficiently and effectively carrying out tasks like searching. They can't carry as much gear though and don't do as well in melee combat as the other sizes. A medium survivor can be an average sized person and a bit of an all-rounder. They're not gonna excel at any one thing, but they're gonna be pretty handy in melee and also in ranged combat they can carry a medium amount of items. Then you've got the large survivor. Now these can carry more supplies, use heaviest weapons, and really hold their own in melee combat. They're not gonna be able to dodge range attacks very well though, but they really can hold up. These are the tanks of your group. For bubblegum, we're gonna choose medium. And so now we've chosen medium, we know that we can go on and fill some of the other characteristics out, such as the carry slot items. And every medium character has a total of eight carry slots. With our size decided, we can use the table in the book to tell us what numbers to put in the other characteristics for our reflex, guard, armor, and action. So we're gonna cover this later on in future videos. Now let's move on and choose a job. So we've got a job table and a hobby table. 
and each one has got a choice of 10 different jobs or hobbies that you can choose from. And these all match the cards that are in the book to photocopy, download free from the website, or you can buy the campaign asset book and cut them out. Here's the job cards, and so you can see that there's four abilities on each card, and these match the abilities on the table. And you have to work in a chain going from one through four. So you can't skip, you have to get each one. Now, I'm going to go with a handyman here for Bubblegum. That's going to be his job. He's a bit of a drifter, a bit of a mechanic, and really a handy person to have in the group. So you can see all the abilities laid out there. We're not going to worry about those just yet, because the only way to acquire those is with a Pop Z token. Now we've got 10 of the hobby cards, and these work exactly the same way. You've got the four abilities there. And we've decided to go with the gambler hobby for Bubblegum. We imagine as he moves from town to town, he's a bit of a gambler, gets involved in some games, and so that's going to come in handy during the skirmishes. All right, so we've got our two cards now, and the way these will work is you can overlap them, and as you gain the abilities, you can slide your main character card down to reveal them. But again, we need those Pop Z tokens, so we don't have them yet, so we're just going to cover up the abilities and just leave the gambler and the handyman showing so we know the job and hobby that Bubblegum has. And then we're also going to enter those onto the card. So just write it in here. With 10 hobbies, 10 jobs and 10 skills that you're going to see in a moment, there's a possible 1000 combinations here for your survivors. And you can also do it randomly if you want to, but we definitely recommend going for the option that will be most fun and play into the narrative the most. All right, let's have a look at that skill table then. So again, there's 10 skills. There's only one skill ability here though, and you automatically gain that. You don't need a Pop Z token. So in the skill section there of your character card, just write in the condition that comes with the skill. Now we wanted to go for a little leadership role for Bubblegum, and so we've chosen the leadership skill, and that's gonna allow him to reroll any one dice per round, and any of the survivors who are taking part in the skirmish can do that. All right, so now we've got the character card filled out, we've got our backpack ready, and we've got our job, hobby, and skills done. It's time to look at the weapons. You're allowed to choose two starter weapons. Here you can see the ranged weapons. You could have one ranged, one melee, two ranged, or two melee. So it's up to you. But we've decided to go with a pump action shotgun, and then going for the melee weapons, we want Bubblegum to be a bit of a brawler, so we're going to give him the knuckle dusters. And this is a real good weapon to go up against some of the tougher zombies, some of the big bosses, but also some NPC survivors too. So we really want him to take the lead and be pretty tough in a fight. That's now all the cards we need for our survivor, and we'll have everything to hand on the table when we play the game. But we do get one Pop Z token when we create a survivor, and we're allowed to spend that on the first ability of either the job or the hobby ability chain. We're gonna go with the first ability in the gambler hobby chain. And um, just use a whiteboard marker pen here to cross over and using the card protectors will allow us to reuse those cards as well. That token is spent now, so we'll remove that. And there we go. Bubblegum is ready for action. We filled out the character card. He's got his weapons. He's got his job and hobby sorted and he's purchased his first ability. So now he's ready to get stuck in and do battle against those zombies. His weapons are chosen and in future videos, we'll go through everything you need to know for the weapons and how combat works. But that's part one complete. Now you know how to build your survivor group and create your first survivor. If you'd like to grab hold of Bubblegum's character sheet, then you can download it for free on our website. I'll put a link down below so you can easily find it. On there, you'll find all the cards we've gone through and we've completed them for you. We've also written a background for Bubblegum and created another character called Ella. So you've got two to use as a template, a little guide as you create your own characters. I hope you found this video helpful and it'd be awesome if you come and join me for part two where we'll be looking at the key concepts of the game and then we're going to move on and in 10 parts of the series we're going to cover everything from noise and difficulty, movement actions, we're going to go into detail about all the other actions you can use in the game. We're going to focus on searching, which is a huge part of the survival game, and then also go and detail how to make ranged attacks with cover and line of sight. Melee attacks with combat support 
and we'll look at zombies and how NPCs work in the game before moving on and started a campaign and going through everything you need to know for that. And then we'll have a look at a skirmish overview and then a demo game too. If you'd like to find out more about the game, check out the book review where I give you a complete overview of the book. There's a link down below and at the end of the video for that. And I've also done another video for the Pop Z asset book, which takes you through the option to purchase this book where you can get all the cards already printed for you. Thanks so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it helpful. We're really excited to have launched our new game, Population Z, and there's so much in the pipeline coming. New campaigns, we've got one shots, skirmishes, little challenges for you to complete, and loads of other free resources available on the website. So if you liked the video, it'd be awesome if you hit the like button, subscribe to keep up to date with the series and future videos, and I look forward to seeing you here again next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep going with these regular videos. I couldn't do this without you and I appreciate your support so much. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel, get some great perks at the same time, there's a link down below in the description. It'll be awesome to see you there.